Right guys, I think I've discovered the ultimate carp fishing edge. I'm going to share it with you now. I said the weather was changing. It's actually come a lot sooner than I thought. And the first fish of the spring for me. Right, hello and welcome to another video. And I'm happy to say we are in spring now. As you can see behind me, it's looking beautiful. Although the weather is due to turn absolutely horrific later on. So I've got down fairly early, sort of 10 o'clock in the morning. And I've got until about three o'clock this afternoon when the clouds are rolling in. There's due to be 50 mile an hour winds and uh, heavy rain as well. So I've got a lot to do before the weather comes, but I just wanted to talk you through my sort of spring tactics for this year really. Every year I sort of um, have a little change up just to see if I can get a few extra bites in the spring. So what I'm going to do on this session is talk you through my sort of uh, tactics and thought process for spring this year and moving into the summer months and the warmer months, hopefully when the fish are waking up and we'll be catching a few more. It's been a bit slow over this winter with the up and down weather and I've been quite busy with work stuff, but um, here we are, we're at the lake. As you can see behind me, I've got all my stuff just dumped on the floor and I'm about to start setting up. On this session, I'll uh, take you through all the tactics and everything, like I said, from spring fishing. And also I've got a new boat to tell you about as well, which is quite exciting. It's got a fish finder built into it and it's got GPS so you can automatically send your baits out and things like that. So that's quite exciting as well, guys. I've not used a, a boat with a fish finder before. It's a bit bright there, sorry quite a bright sunny day as you can see so i'm um, not expecting much in the daytime but hopefully tonight when those uh, winds and the rain comes we should get a few fish so stay tuned guys i'm gonna get set up i'll talk you through the tactics at some point on the session hopefully we'll have a few fish i'm, I'm sure we will on this session because the fish must be waking up now and then um, yeah hopefully i'll get a chance to talk to you about my new boat before the weather comes so let's get cracking So I've got everything kind of set up now. I haven't got any rods out yet. I had to take my jumper off because it's so warm. It must be about 15 degrees, but um, the clouds are coming in now, so it's gone a little bit darker. But I just thought quickly before I get the rods out, I'll talk you through the rigs that I'm using on this session. Not a lot of changes as far as rigs go for me because I've used the same ones for a few years now and I've had lots of success on them. So I don't believe in sort of chopping and changing just for the sake of it. So two of my rods are going out on my favourite Withy Pool rigs there, so that's simply a size 6 angling iron curve shank hook with a bit of shrink tube just to form that sort of curve for the upright section. Got a hook ring swivel on the shank and a little 12mm amino ester yellow pop up there. It's about 6 or 7 inches, a strippable coated braid with a shot just to counterbalance the pop up and a little bit of putty in the middle there which just sinks it down as it's falling through the water, it helps the middle of the hook link to sink and lay flat on the bottom and, and kind of stops tangles and kicks it away from the lead. Got an anti-tangle sleeve onto a quick change swivel. And I've made a slight change. After fishing with um, Joe from Carpology, I'm using lead clips, but I haven't put the pin in, so that can actually pull out. So it's, it's a running rig, really. Um, just a bit of a change for this year. I'm going to try running rigs. There's a little bit of resistance on that swivel in, in the lead clip, but it does, it does pull out very easily. Then it becomes a running rig, nice and safe. Um, I've got tubing above it there, so that just slides up the main line. I've got four ounce lead, so plenty of weight there to set the hook when the fish picks it up. But then when it shakes its head, that swivel can pull out of the lead clip and allow it to be free running. So you get better bite indication 
and the fish aren't able to use the weight of the lead to shed the hook. So it's a good little setup that. I'm using pop-ups because on this lake there's um, been a lot of tree work done over the winter. A lot of branches and leaves have fallen into the lake and obviously there's a bit of rubbish on the bottom. So I'm just using a pop-up to sort of stay above that where there's overhanging trees on the island and stuff. I'll talk you through the spots when I'm, um, when I'm all set up, but I'm using pop-ups on two and then the other rod, which I think is a slightly clearer spot along the margin where there's no overhanging trees. I've got this um, little wafter rig. Now, it is a slightly new rig for me, that. But essentially, it's like a D-rig, but I've got a bit stripped back near the hook so that it can uh, turn to the fish's mouth a little bit easier. I've got a white SS1 wafter on there because I'm going to fish that nearer the bottom over some small bits and hopefully get the fish that are just sort of sifting through the smaller items I'm going to put out there. A couple of blobs of putty on there, just pinning it down and the same lead set up and a four ounce lead, the same as the other rods. So that's my rigs and the hook bait choices. So I'm going to get the rods out now and I'll talk to you a little bit more about the bait that I'm using and fishing these over and then the spots that I'm fishing as well. Right, hopefully you can still hear me. Um, I said the weather was changing. It's actually come a lot sooner than I thought. It's only about an hour and a half after I got here and the heavens have opened out there. I don't know how well you can see. It's quite bright, but um, yeah, I've just had to put the front down on the bivvy and um, get everything inside to keep it dry, but it is slowly brightening up again. So it might just be a shower. Hopefully I'll have time to get the rods out before it rains again later, but um, I will sort of uh, keep you posted what's going on, guys. But yeah, I'll get the rods out as soon as I can, and then I'll talk you through a little bit more about the tactics. Right, so as you can see there, I've got all three rods out now. Um, we've had quite a lot of rain in between getting the rods out, um, but I have managed to get three out on the spots nicely. Um, the wind's getting a bit crazy now. Um, the bivvy's starting to flap about a bit, so it is going to be a bit of a hectic night, I think, in terms of weather. But hopefully that is good for the fishing. Um, as you can see, it's pretty blustery so i just thought i'd quickly talk you through the spots i'm fishing so i've come down to the far end of the lake here i just like this swim because you get a little bit more water to fish than a lot of the other swims it's quite a quite a tight lake with the the islands here there's not a lot of water between the islands and the bank so coming down to this end it just gives me a bit more water to kind of spread my rods out a little bit and a bit more space to play the fish without getting tangled in my other lines etc. So what I've basically done is just use the boat and I've driven out to the island here so where you've got this overhanging tree I've gone underneath there with the boat that's why I'm using the boat really because you can't really cast underneath the tree when there's these overhanging branches here you'll end up getting in those branches and obviously at night if you need to recast you can't really do it very effectively so the boat just allows you to get accurately under the tree and drop a little bit of bait there so some people say it's cheating but I'd rather do that than getting hung up in the tree especially in the middle of the night um, my other rods going towards the aerator over here I think you can see there there's just a nice deep bit underneath the aer aerator where it's kind of churned itself out and um, made like a deep spot which the fish like to sit under and then another rod is just going to the island margin over here. Again, there's like overhanging trees and stuff. So I've just got it tucked up to the island under them trees. So the boat has allowed me to do that nice and uh, easily and efficiently. Obviously I can cast there. It's only about 40 yards, but um, 
the boat just allows me to do it without worrying about the trees and everything. So I just thought I'd tell you my spots whilst I'm sat in the bivvies sheltering from this rain. Um, and hopefully if we get a bit of a dry weather window in the next couple of hours, I'll um, talk you through the bait that I'm using because I've done something a little bit different. It's a little bit of an interesting technique which I don't see many people doing. And I think this time of year in the spring, it's perfect um, just to nick a bite. So I'll show you that as well when we get a bit of um, a break in the weather. But as you might hear, it is coming in quite hard at the moment. Right guys, rain has stopped and we've had a take on the right hand rod. I'm just trying to stop it going under the rope of the aerator here. I just want it to come back towards me into open water. It's a bit tricky because it's a tight swimming obviously with three rods out. You don't want to be going over your other lines. So I've got back leads on, which helps with that a little bit. I've got it, got it more or less into open water now, but there's um, a line on the island where someone's cast into a tree. And it seems to have gone round that at the minute. So it's a bit of a problem but I think I've got it moving. guys first fish of the session nice upper double common probably 17 18 pounds something like that haven't bothered weighing it but uh, we've had some atrocious weather and it's nice to be off the mark in between the rainstorms and the hail as well it's been pretty mental so far so yeah first fish of the spring for me happy days not massive but it's nice to be uh, catching fish and I've actually got the lake to myself, so that's a bonus too. So I'll get this one back and I'll give you guys a little update of what's been happening. So we're coming into the evening now and I've just put that fish back. Really happy to be off the mark in daylight. A lot of the bites I've had on this lake have been in the darkness really, sort of through the winter and stuff. And I think now we're getting into spring, we've got slightly longer daylight hours. And so you've got more chance of getting the fish in the daylight. So it's nice to be able to get decent pictures and footage of the fish as well to show you guys. So yeah, that was on my right hand rod, which was just the little yellow pop up over little scattering of bait. I've not actually been able to talk you through my bait properly yet that I'm using because the weather's been so atrocious. We had the absolute mother of all hailstorms earlier on and we're mid-April now. So it's quite crazy for the time of year, but um, the wind's really picked up. You know, it was 50 mile an hour, it was raining, and then suddenly that rain turned into hail and it was proper noisy. And uh, little pockets of hailstones all collected around the back of the bivvy and everything. So. It was pretty mental and I was kind of thinking maybe that was going to kill it because that sort of colder water going to the lake might switch the fish off but 
it seems to uh, not have bothered it too much and the fish uh, have come on to the spot and fed. So I had to redo all three rods because that fish kind of swam from right all the way to the left, took out my left hand rod and it came back and took out my middle rod. And then finally I landed it on the right hand side of the swim where it started. So <laughs> a bit annoying, but it's the problem with a, a small lake like this where you've not got a lot of space and I've, I've backleaded my lines, but the fish sort of managed to sort of swim behind the back lead and that sort of thing. And, you know, you can't bully them too much because you'll rip the hook out. So I have to sort of let it go where it wants to go a little bit. And yeah, unfortunately it ended up in a bit of a pickle, but didn't do too much damage. I managed to get the rods back out and uh, all sweet again now. So yeah, we're coming into the evening, as I said, and hopefully there's going to be a few more fish to show you. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to have to talk you through a baiting approach because I've, I've slightly tweaked it for the spring um, and I might do it throughout the year depending on how it goes but there's a, a, a nice little edge that I'll show you where um, you can get a lot of attraction into the area without too many solid food particles so if you're just sort of fishing for a bite at a time and uh, working your way through the fish that way it's quite a nice way to get the attraction in the water without feeding the fish so I'll show you that and um, yeah hopefully we'll have a few more fish through the night and then the sun's meant to be out in the morning so I can hopefully dry everything off. <laughs> Right guys, um, we've had a bit of a result. Just as I was time lapsing into darkness, the middle rod's gone off, so that's two spots that I've had fish on now. And we've had this lovely mid-20 common. It's, uh, it's 25 pound four. Caught on the same uh, with the pool rig as I was telling you before on the little yellow pop-up. Oh, there we go. That's a nice fish. 25 pound four on the little yellow amino ester pop-up with the pool rig with my little bait edge, which I'm gonna show you in the morning. So stay tuned for that, guys. But yeah, I'm buzzing with that. That's my second biggest fish of the year so far. It's nice to keep the ball rolling with a decent mid-20. Right guys, I think I've discovered the ultimate carp fishing edge. Not something I've seen before in carp fishing, so you saw it here first. It's really, really changed my angling over the last few weeks, and I can't recommend it highly enough. So here it is. It's Nescafe Caramel Latte. Oh my God, this stuff's amazing. <laughs> it's um, essentially like a, a powdered, ready-made, drink and it means that you don't have to take milk with you, you don't have to take coffee and sugar and taking up space and weight in your bag. Literally these are little sachets, everything's in there, you just add hot water and it makes a nice frothy coffee, really really tasty and you can take the sachets out of the box so you don't have to take that big box with you, just put like five or six in your bag for your session and they weigh nothing and they take up no space at all and they're absolutely delicious so in all seriousness, this is a bit of a joke, you know, but it does actually cut down the weight, which is really important if you want to be mobile and get on the fish. And they're really, really tasty as well. So 
I'm not sponsored by Nescafe in any way, but I can't recommend them highly enough. Really nice and, you know, cuts down your weight, so that's always a bonus. Right guys, let's talk about bait a little bit then. So, what I've been doing on this session and my last few sessions down this lake, instead of just using my normal approach of, you know, boilies and a bit of crumb and a few pellets in the boat, um, I've actually started preparing a bit of a mix which I can put out as, as a ball, lots of little balls and just dot them around the swim and it breaks down to dust on the bottom. And then when you fish it, it'll pop up in amongst that. That's the only sort of solid food item. So what I do is I get some uh, boilies and I crumb them up with a crusher. And then I put some little, uh, little two mil pellets in there and I add some live amino liquid to it and give that a good mix. And that coats it all and starts soaking in. Then you add a bit of lake water, just gradually a little bit at a time give it a stir and it should start binding together. As the pellets soak in that liquid, it starts forming a bit of a paste and it holds the boily crumb together. And then you can, you can boil them up and you can fire them out with a catapult and they hold together quite nicely. And then when they hit the water and get to the bottom, break down into little, little puffs of dust really. Loads of attraction because of the liquids I'm putting in there and obviously the pellets and the, the boily crumb as well but there's nothing really to feed the fish. It's just attraction. So they're gonna be coming in and searching around and the only thing they can find is your hook bait. So hopefully this time of year in the spring, you know, when they're looking for something visual really, a bright pop-up in the face is just gonna stand out and they sort of come in, get a bit frustrated, they can't find anything to eat and then they sort of eat your hook bait. And it's worked for me, you know, my last two sessions down there, I've had three fish on my last session using it, a couple of 20 pounders, and I've had two on this session as well, a mid 20 and an upper double. So it's clearly working and I'm not giving the fish anything to sort of fill them up and nothing to sort of preoccupy them. So it takes longer for them to find the hook bait. You know, they're just coming in on the smell. There's nothing really there apart from a bit of dust and uh, that quickly sort of wafts away and leaves a scent in the area, but then your hook bait sat there, almost fishing as a single, really. So try that, guys. Soak your pellets, make them sort of damp and soft, and then it sort of forms a paste. Add your boily crumb to it, which gives the sort of a, a matching flavour to the, um, the hook bait. And then uh, you can ball them up, small little 20 mil balls with a, with a ball maker, and fire them out, you know, sort of 10 of them around your rig, is enough for a bite really at this time of year. And that's really been working for me, so give that a go. Right, so here it is guys, my new boat. It's the Catjax Pro from Ripton. Now you might have seen on my channel before, I think it was about a year ago, I had the original Catch X. It's a very different design to this. It's the same shape and everything, but it was a gray color. It had four hoppers and it didn't have the fish finder built in. Now they've improved it dramatically. They've made it two hoppers because they realized that four hoppers was just too much. It made the holes a little bit too small. So they've gone for two hoppers. You've got a nice long length of each hopper to get your rig in there and two hoppers is really useful if you want to drop your rig on one spot and a little bit of bait off to the side or something like that. So it's really handy for that. And it's got the built-in uh, Hydrobat fish finder as well. So this is attached on the back here via this clever carbon arm system. So when that's on the water, it sort of finds its own level and it can move up and down with the sort of uh, ripple of the water. So it's always getting an accurate reading of the depth and uh, no interference from any movement of the boat. So I took this out yesterday over one of my spots just out of interest to see what it was like out there because I've never used a, a fish finder sort of sonar before and I just wanted to see kind of the depth and what features were out on the spot and it was quite interesting. I drove away from the margin, dropped down quite quick into about five foot and it was flat all the way across to about two rod lengths off the island where it started coming up again. And that was where I was fishing, just on that sort of shelf there. And actually the fish finder started pinging fish all around that area. So 
I knew it was a good spot and th there must have been six or seven fish icons all in one area on the screen and actually that's one of the rods that produced the fish last night so it, it's, uh, it shows that it, it picks up the fish and, uh, and finds them where they are. It's also got built-in GPS so you can actually drive it out to your spot and set a point and then it can automatically drive out and drop your bait on that spot so really handy on those bigger lakes where you know you, you're fishing at long range and you need to get the same spot every time rather than using the line clip or anything on your rod you can set points where you want to drive it out to and it will go out there automatically and drop your rigs for you so really handy especially if you're fishing the same lake regularly and you want to go and bait up at night so you don't want anyone seeing what you're doing you can drive it out there with the GPS and it will drop the bait in the right spot for you without anyone really noticing where you put in your bait so no one's going to sheep you up and get on your spot so really handy for that also it allows you to map out lakes by um, driving around and it, it, it will record the the detail of the bottom and give you like a bathymetric map of the lake. I've not used these features yet because I've only just got the boat really. Um, so I'm still kind of getting to grips with how it all works, but you get an app with it, the Ripton app, and you attach that to the controller and then that connects to your boat and it, it picks up the information from the, the, the fish finder sonar on the screen there and also it it has the GPS location of the boat so you can kind of see where you are on the lake um, all on the screen and you can control it from the app like that if you want to. I tend to use it more as a standard bait boat. I don't really need all those extra features but it's nice to have them. But you can just drive it as a normal boat without your phone and the app and just use the joystick on the single hand controller. So that's quite a nice feature to be able to use the controller single handedly my previous boats I've had in the past have all been sort of two hands. You've got to use your left and your right thumb to uh, to drive and steer the boat, which makes it very hard to try and hold your rod and control your line while you're sending your boat out to your spot. So being able to use it one-handed is really nice. You know, you can hold your rod in one hand and feather the line, keep it nice and tight. I always have the tip under the water to sink the line at the same time as well and you can uh, drive it out and then when you drop it you know you can feel the lead down and actually feel the donk on the bottom so you know you're fishing on a good spot as well so it's really useful to be able to hold your rod while you're sending your boat out. Um, all in all so far it's been great I've only used it for two or three sessions but it's stood up to you know being used consistently. My previous boat the original Catch X I actually took to France for a week and the battery lasted for the whole week which is quite incredible there was no charging points on the lake there. So I was really relying on the boat lasting for me. And I figured that if the boat died during the week, then I'd have to sort of cast my spots, but at least I'd sort of use the boat to find the spots and, and get marked up and everything. But it actually lasted for the whole week. So that blew me away. And this boat has actually got upgraded batteries from that original boat, I believe. So it should last even longer. So a real strong point of this boat is the battery life on it. I've only um, charged it once since I've got it and you know I've been on two or three sessions and it's still showing sort of 89% battery life on the handset there so quite incredible all round really and a great great boat for those people that want a boat that's packed with features and can do everything but can also be used as a standard bait boat as well which is as I said probably how I'm going to use it most of the time but it is very interesting to have the sonar on there because it's really nice to map lakes out and, um, and find spots and features and particularly weed beds and things like that when it's warmer weather you know you're going to have weed growth and this will show you the clear spots in the weed and you can kind of trap your line with a rod when you get out to those spots and uh, clip it up so you can cast there you know even if you're not going to use the boat on your sessions it gives you that option to kind of map out and find spots ready for your next session when you're going to go fishing um, but obviously you can use the, um, the GPS built into the boat to kind of set those points and, uh, and it will automatically do it itself and then it automatically drives back to a home point near the bank where you've set as well so you can be sort of setting your rod on your, on your alarm and getting all your bobbins sorted and everything whilst the boat is automatically coming back to, 
to your swim, so you don't have to drive it back um, at the same time as trying to sort your rod out or you know control your line if it's a windy day or something like that. So it does have a lot of features packed into it, and I've really enjoyed using it so far. I've only just touched the surface really of what it can do, but um, it was interesting yesterday to send it out with the fish finder on and kind of see what was out on the bottom and to see all those fish icons come up around about the area where I was fishing and to get a take after after putting it out there you know it, it kind of proved to me that it was um, accurate in, in where it, it was telling me the fish were so you know I'm not going to use it to find fish really because that's kind of not the aim of the game but it just gives you a gauge of the depths and the features and contours of the lake and obviously if fish icons ping up they can sort of give you an idea if you are sort of in the roughly the right area where you need to be so yeah great bit of kit guys bait boats aren't for everyone but on some lakes particularly where i'm fishing now you've got overhanging trees on the island you can't really cast underneath there there's already lots of rigs and line hanging from them where people have tried to cast there i'd much rather use a boat it's nice and stealthy it gets out there in one go and you're not risking kind of hooking up in the trees and you can fish on spots where some people can't necessarily get to. As long as it's safe, I think that's a really good edge in, in fishing these days to be able to do that. So I think why not use something if it's available in the market today and it will hopefully catch you a few more fish. So yeah, I'm really impressed with it and well done the guys at Ripton for uh, putting this boat together. So we've just got a couple of hours left of the session now. I'm just going to start slowly packing things down while it's still dry. We've got more rain to come. It's been a really crazy session in terms of weather. We've only had those two fish, um, which were all sort of just before it got dark last night. Um, and, and nothing since then. I think because it went a bit cold overnight, it just kind of killed it off, really. But um, I hope that was interesting for you, you know, hearing about my spring tactics and that little tweak with, uh, with my bait. I did end up putting a little bit bait in the boat when I sent it out it's hard to resist isn't it but I put like five boilies in and five crumbs and a tiny bit of pellet and then I scattered those um those balls around the boat of the um of the crumb and the pellet sort of paste that I made up um very very minimal bait for this time of year and just a little bright pop-up just to you know shout to them come get me sort of thing and uh, it's obviously worked I've got that nice mid 20 and an upper double as well so not a bad session really and I've survived the weather and lived to tell the tale. So happy days, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.